Now, in addition to just sending off a plain message here, Outlook has what are called delivery options, basically the how and when you want to send your message. Yeah, you can actually tell Outlook when to send your message for you. To look at these options, first of all, create your email message, and before you send it off, come up here on the Message tab, over to the Options group, and click on its expandable dialog box button. And I'm looking down below under the Delivery Options section, and you can use one or a combination of all these options here. First one is, is where do you want to have the reply sent to? Now, by default, without checking it, it's going to be sent back to me. But if I check it, it'll actually dump my name in here because, by default, I want to reply back. Of course, I could delete it if I want, but I won't. Also, I can select additional names by clicking on the button here. And either choose names or contacts from the global address list. Again, it'll only show the global address list if you're set up on a Microsoft Exchange server or click on the drop down arrow and use your local contacts. I have Jason here, double click to add him down below and double click as many people as you want in on the reply. Click OK. Now keeping in mind that it's just tied to this message. So when Carrie hits reply, not only will I get it, but also a copy will go to Jason and anybody else. The reason for that might be that if this is about an HR issue like customer support reps, how many do we want to hire? I may want the reply also sent back to Jason. So instead of getting the email back from Carrie and then forwarding on to Jason, I can avoid all these messages flying all over the place and just have the replies sent back to the people whom I think that it's important that they know what's going on or what Carrie thinks here. Next is the Do Not Deliver Before option. Check that. And it's the date and time. What that means is that I can have this message sit in my outbox and not deliver it until it hits tonight at 5 o'clock. Or I could say, click on the drop down arrow tomorrow, uh, May 20th, and let's do it at 5 a.m. Now, a couple things you want to keep in mind. When I click on the send button, this message again is going to go to the outbox and it's going to sit there until tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Now, you've got to have your Microsoft Outlook program open. If you don't have it open, it's not going to be delivered. It's not going to magically open up the program and send it for you. So, again, one of two things you can do either leave Microsoft Outlook open all night and it'll shoot it off for you when it comes 5 a.m., or come in tomorrow before 5 a.m. and open up Outlook and it'll shoot it off for you. Or, I guess the other option is, is that just come in late at an hour or two hours after the time. When you open up Outlook, it'll see that it's past due or that you're past due, and it'll shoot it off for you. One of the reasons why you might want to do this is, for example, sending this off to Carrie. I know she has a project that she's busily working on today, and I don't want to send her an email and interrupt her process there or her workflow. Look, I got my message done. I know what I want to say. I don't want to have to worry about sending it off later. I'll just automatically have it done for me when I come into work tomorrow, anytime after 5 a.m. Next, the expires after date and time. All that does is that when it comes due, let's say this email message is going to expire this Friday. All it does is when Carrie gets this message, when she opens it up on the info bar, when it comes past due, when it's like, let's say, Friday at 6 p.m., it's going to have a little message that says, this message has expired. Now, you can take that meaning for whatever it's worth. Let me make a point. Let's say I need a ride to the dentist's office. My appointment's at 6 p.m. Friday night. My car's in the shop. I'm asking her if she can drive me to the dentist. Well, if she doesn't get the message until 6 p.m. and she opens it up and she's like, oh, my gosh, take him to the dentist, and then she looks up here and says, message has expired, then she's like, oh, I guess I'm too late. That's one way. Now, this is what it looks like from the sender side when I send this off. I'm going to show you what it looks like when I receive a message from somebody else and that has an expiration date on that message, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click Close. When I click Close, there's no Save button. It just automatically saves it. All I have to do is go ahead and click Send, and off it goes. Well, it doesn't go out because, remember, I set the delivery option to be tomorrow at 5 a.m., so it's just going to sit there. Now, if I need to make changes before it gets sent off, that's okay. Just come to the out box here and go over here and double-click and open it up because it hasn't been sent yet, right? And then I can come up here to the Options group, click on its expandable box here, and make any changes, like maybe extend the delivery time and date, or put it out a little bit further. Or, up at the top here, you've got a few more options. They have what's called the Request a Delivery Receipt for this message. Now, if for some reason you're concerned that somebody's not getting your emails, well, you can get a kickback from the server that says, yes, we delivered this email to Carrie Heffernan. In addition to that, you can also, or separately, you can uncheck that as well, is you, you can request a read receipt for this message. All that means is that when Carrie gets this email and she double-clicks to open it up, she'll get a little prompt that says, Kurt Kershaw's request to be notified when you read this message. Is that okay? If Carrie clicks yes, then I get an email back that says, hey, Carrie's read the message. If she says no, I'll never know if she read the message or not. 
Now I'll show you a little trick how to get around that if somebody sends you a read request and how to open it up without having to say no and read the message and then when you're ready have it send the read receipt for you because if they're requesting a read receipt they assume that the moment that they get the receipt back that that's the time you open it up. So if you're late for a birthday or something or you want to be late for a birthday or maybe going to the opera again I'll show you how to open it up without being caught and then pretend like you open it up later. Let me go ahead and check both. What I'm going to do is because we don't have much time to sit around to wait for this to be sent, I'll change the uh, delivery time here. We won't say it's tomorrow, let's say it's today. And you can see my clock down below is 451. Let's go ahead and change it to PM of course. 430, come up here and we'll say it will be 52. And hit the space bar and click close and click send and then we're watching this. Now usually Outlook has a one minute delayed response so when you come down here and you're looking at the time and if it doesn't send it off right at exactly at that time and in this case 452 give it a minute 453 and then it should shoot it off. You see there it goes it's sending the message took about 30 seconds or so but it shot it off. Here we go it's coming back now we got the postmaster saying hey your message has been delivered to the following recipients that's the first message I got back. The second message I'm hoping to get back is when Carrie reads it, okay? Let me go to my inbox again, and there's the postmaster icon here that says, hey, I did my job. We got your message that we delivered it. Now I'm going to go ahead and have Carrie open it up and say yes and click yes to um, that she read this, the email message I just sent to her. So we can see what it looks like, the response on our end here. And there we go. There's my read receipt. It's up at the top. See the different icons? We've got one with an arrow just pointing over to the right. That's your delivery confirmation. And then we have one with a check mark that says that's your read confirmation that Carrie read it at this time. Of course, you can double click to open it up and it says your message was read at this time. Close out. Okay, I went ahead and asked Carrie to send me an email message here. So we can see what it looks like from our end when we get an email that expires by a certain day and time and also when we get a message that requires a read receipt from us. When we double click to open it up, Carrie's going to ask us if we can go ahead and send her a read receipt that when we got this email we read it. Okay, I've asked Carrie to send me an email with a couple of delivery options. Now before I double click and open this up, it's going to prompt me to either say yes or no to send a read receipt and I only get one chance. If I don't want to show that I've read the email yet, but I want to read it, go ahead and click on the Restore button and restore your Outlook down so you can see part of your desktop. And then click and drag your email to the desktop. Double click to open it up, read your email, and then close out of it. And of course you can right click on it and delete it. Then once you read it, you understand the gist of it. You can make the person who sent it look like you're really fast and really smart because all you have to do is double click to open it up here and again like I said it gives you one chance to either say yes to send a read receipt or no when I click yes it sends it off it opens up my email then I can quickly hit reply because I already read the email outside of the inbox type in exactly my words click send and boy Carrie will think I'm just so fast and on top of things now this message is set to expire after five o'clock now like I said Microsoft is about a minute or two slow when it comes to pop-ups, tasks, and in this case also delivery expiration. Let me go ahead and close out of it and then give it a second or two until it hits about 502. Then I can go ahead and double click and open up that message and that's what I'm talking about. The message has expired at 5 o'clock. Again, it's just a visual cue. So when you get that, know that it doesn't matter according to Carrie who sent this email after this time because maybe she needed an answer before that time otherwise she just had to go ahead without me and in this case schedule a time to have an on-site with Micro. Then after a while within a couple hours or at least the very next day this expired message will actually have a line through it so you'll even know before you open the message the next day if it's even worth opening you'll see a line through the name who it's from the subject just a gray line it'll be faded out Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.